Hello, this is Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. Today we are looking at applications from the book of Hosea, the prophet Hosea. So Hosea, the name um, may be familiar to you because it's he's more of one of the well-known prophets in the Old Testament, but his name, um, you may not know, means salvation. Hosea means salvation. So let's get started and talk about what happens in the book of Hosea and how we can apply that to our lives. So Hosea um, means salvation, which is good because it's kind of connected to the prophetic word that he needs to give to Israel. So he is um, a regular person too. And I know I want to just mention that like he's a, um, he's a, um, now I can't think of the term for it. He works with pots and clay and that kind of stuff so he's a that person and he is a part of um he's also a prophet but he works with his hands building making things pots and stuff like that so he's very poor and that becomes a part of the an intricate part of the story because he marries a prostitute the lord tells him to marry a prostitute now he's not wealthy but he marries a prostitute who is accustomed to being taken care of. And um, we, you know, it's not 100% clear of if it's because he doesn't have money or if it's because she likes just like luxurious life that this becomes a big um, problem because she continues in her prostitution. Uh, the implication is that she likes the life that she can have with all of these other Johns or men that she's, uh, you know, in prostitution with. That's what that's what it looks like. So God tells Hosea, marry the prostitute. He marries the prostitute. He's poor. She wants more. And she goes on in prostitution. Institution. They have children together and all of the, the children's names all become these names of like deprivation. Like this is what happens when you cheat on me, unloved, uncared for, like that kind of thing. So these names are, are uh, the children are named all these horrible, like kind of destitute names. And the woman still continues in prostitution. The, um, the wife's name is Gomer. The, um, she is Hosea's wife but she is actively involved in prostitution although her husband wants her to come back so she becomes rebellious and keeps on in her regular routine and Hosea is uh you know waiting for her wanting her to come back and wanting the relationship to be restored and it's not because she has other intentions and um God uses Hosea's life as a parallel to the life of uh, Israel, to the people of Israel and God, that relationship. So basically, God is, is uh, Hosea and the people of Israel are Gomer, the wife that won't be faithful because the people of Israel were not faithful to God. So um, as the story progresses, uh, the people that Gomer goes to prostitute herself to, or at least the last person that she's involved with, gets tired of her. And then he just kind of basically throws her to the side and um, she's for sale in the marketplace for like nothing because nobody wants her and um, she's considered useless at this time. And what happens is Hosea goes and buys her back, but he pays way more than what she is quote unquote worth or what's being asked of her in the marketplace. And so again, this symbolizes how God is ready to restore his people when they return to him. So it becomes a very interesting um, connection. For me, when I look at the book of Hosea, I always think about what ha is happening to Hosea in this story. We get the children of Israel because if you read the prophets, minor and major, you kind of get this understanding that the children of Israel, they just, they they were hard to follow directions. They were very hard-headed. I mean, yeah, they, they struggled with doing the right thing, doing what they know God told them to do. And people were always needing to tell them to obey, to do the right thing. So that was common. So that that's the application, but it's just a, a sign to me that no matter what we think of ourselves or who we think we are, even if we know we're called and chosen and special and we see miracles and we're delivered from 
treacherous situations, we will still go back to our own devices and do whatever it is that we have decided we will do. And it's an easy thing to do. Slip into darkness, okay? <laughs> slip into waywardness, slip into rebellion. It's easy. Um, and so I know that that's one of the big applications from not just Hosea, but many of the other prophets. But then the second, I always look at, like I said, the life of Hosea and what had to happen to him. He was told by God to marry this prostitute. And it's because he had already given his life to the Lord, meaning allowed the Lord to use any part of his life that he wanted to, that he went ahead and did it. And he ended up being very uncomfortable, if not outright suffering as a result of listening to what God told him to do. But in that suffering came an impassioned cry and ability to help others. And I think um, that's something that I want to really kind of talk about as an application. We go through a lot. Um, most of us can't say that, that God told us to marry somebody that we know you know, wasn't ready to be married. Um, although I've, I've heard the argument before, most of us can't actually say that wholeheartedly, but even when we're not being completely directed to do something that might end up being harmful, we find ourselves in situations and times in our lives in which we're enduring pain, difficulty, distress, or discomfort. We don't like the place that we are. We don't like what we have or don't have. We don't like how we feel about where we are. And we do know that somehow God has put us in a position to be where we are at that time. And that becomes uncomfortable. And when that's the case, like it was for Hosea, the question is, can you trust him no matter what? Because Hosea had to trust God, even though he married an unfaithful wife, the scripture actually says, marry an unfaithful prostitute. Like it, it doesn't say marry a former prostitute. It says marry an unfaithful one, one who is not going to be loyal to you. One who still wants the, the luxuries, uh, quote unquote, luxuries of the life that she's used to marry her. Somebody who's not going to appreciate the work that you do. They don't care if you're a prophet. They don't care anything about embarrassing you. They don't care about the, the children that they're going to have with you. Marry that one marry that prostitute that doesn't want to come back and do the right thing. And so he, God clearly puts him in the position of a discomfort so that he can identify with the burden that God is carrying for the children of Israel. Now at the end it's redeemed, right? At the end it's restored and um, Gomer comes back with Hosea. He buys her back because he loves her so much and they are restored in, back in right relationship. But there's a lot of suffering or discomfort at the minimum in that process. And sometimes that's how we are too. Sometimes we are in a position that kind of feels something like a Hosea. I won't say exactly like a Hosea because he really, really, this was an intense situation, but something like a Hosea in which we're feeling like we're being set up nothing's quite moving the way we want it to move. And we, we feel like we're doing everything God has told us to do. And yet somehow in, in our minds, doing what God has told us to do is going to make everything good for us from our perspective, just the way we want. And that's actually pr probably the biggest application here is that that's not the case. Not on your timing, not your way, not by your perception, not necessarily. Trusting God means indeed trusting God through whatever it looks like. And it could look, this story, it look it can look pretty bad, but you trust him because you know that at the end, he's working it out for your good. And so that might mean discomfort for a while. It might mean you're a little bit unsure of what's happening for a while. It could mean that you're tired for a while. It could mean you're even exhausted or frustrated or feeling like you can't endure for a while. But the scripture says that joy comes in the morning. And when we are able to trust God through places like this, we find ourselves able to see his glory be made manifest. Can you hold on until the glory is made manifest? I hope that you can. I hope that you can. I'm praying for you. I hope that you are praying for us. Um, we really, Launching Legacies needs your prayers um, as we continue to try to reach our community more effectively. Uh, please pray for us in that specific regard. Pray that we would have access and a favor to reach our community more effectively um, towards our end of helping people heal, live, and grow. That's a specific prayer request for you. Please Put us in prayer in that regard. And 
know that we will be here again, Mon um, not Monday, excuse me. We will be here on Monday, but we'll be here tomorrow morning with another of our devotionals. And until then, know that I'm praying for you. Know that we, we really do call out unto God for everybody who watches our devotionals because we know that that's part of our commission. I'm asking you to read the book of Hosea. Very small book. Um, and it's packed full of really a very interesting story. Oh, I also want to tell you um, the book of Hosea. I can't find it on my bookshelf right this minute. So forgive me for that. There's a there's a, a book that was written, a novel that was written that is um, the, a rewrite of the book of Hosea, like a modern version of the book of Hosea. And it's really, really impactful for the heart. And I'm not seeing it right now. I'm trying to think of what it's called. Uh, and I can't. I can't see it and I can't think of it. It just came to my mind that, oh, I should talk about it. Um, but I will probably talk about it in a future, bro future broadcast, so look out for that. But it's really good. Um, it's really good and you will you would enjoy it if you enjoy the book of Hosea. All right. Um, sorry for that disorganized thought. But again, see you tomorrow morning with another of our devotionals. Until then, be blessed.